Hi, I'm Claire, Head of Research at the Optimum Health Clinic, and today I'm talking to you about gut health and why we focus so much attention on this when it comes to the immune system, COVID-19 and other viral infections. So the vast majority of infections or toxins that cause disease in humans will enter the body via the lung or the gut. And this includes viruses such as SARS-CoV-2 and Epstein-Barr virus that affects a huge percentage of our ME clients. So it makes sense that the digestive system, and in particular, the top mucosal layer that serves as the interface between the inside of our bodies and the outside world, would be a targeted area of support when it comes to defence against invaders. Now, you might already have heard that 70% of your immune system is in your gut. And what we're referring to here is a specialised tissue known as lymphoid tissue, which houses vast amounts of immune cells, peptides and antibodies such as secretory IgA that neutralise pathogens before they get a chance to enter the body. Simultaneously, the immune cells in our gut have to learn to tolerate or not react to contents of our intestines such as food particles. When this balance between defence and tolerance is disrupted, um, this is where we see people with multiple food intolerances or chemical sensitivities. And secondly, the digestive tract has to allow the passage of nutrients from our diet into the body. And for this to happen, we require good stomach acid levels to activate vitamins such as B12, to digest protein and to absorb minerals such as zinc and iron. We need healthy pancreatic and gallbladder function to digest fats such as omega-3 and 6 and to break down food into smaller constituents. And at the mucosal layer, which is the top layer of the gut lining, we have brush border enzymes that perform the final stages of digestion. Um, they're a bit like scissors, which snip everything down into their single building blocks. And without these, food particles would be too large to enter the bloodstream. So many people think they're eating the perfect diet um, or even taking vitamin supplements for their immune health, but this isn't guaranteed to be getting into the body. So if you have um, any kinds of digestive issues such as IBS or if you're taking medications that lower stomach acid or wear away the gut mucosa such as ibuprofen or antacids or protein pump inhibitors, um, this can be compromised. And finally, you might have seen our previous video on inflammation and its relationship with long COVID or severe COVID. But for many of our patients, the biggest sources of inflammation is the gut. And this recent study shows the impact of the gut microbiome on whether patients with COVID-19 had a functional immune response or a more severe illness. It's generally found that having a more diverse microbiome will lower intestinal inflammation. And this directly translates to lower inflammation in the body and the brain. So here are our tips on how to protect yourself by looking after your gut. So number one, eat a diverse range of vegetables and plant foods, which encourage microbial diversity. You could try doing the 40 plant foods a week challenge, which is surprisingly achievable and fun. And we'll be sharing a handout of our favorite foods to boost your gut health at the end of the talk. Number two, avoid sugar, which selectively feeds pathogenic bacteria such as E. coli that drives up inflammation and lowers diversity. Number three, identify and avoid food intolerances that might be inflaming and compromising the health of the mucosal layer. And finally, managing stress is so key. Cortisol directly suppresses secretory IgA, making it more likely for viruses to enter the body or to reactivate when your defense is low. And when your body's in fight or flight, it is definitely not in rest and digest because the energy and blood flow will be triaged away from your gut and to your fight or flight muscles. So what we suggest is before meal times to do a quick breathing exercise or put in a boundary where you don't eat in front of your computer or whilst you're working or taking a phone call or on the go. So I hope that's helpful. And if you feel like your gut health is not the best it can be, if you have significant IBS or you might be taking a lot of medication, it's best to work with a practitioner um, to help you navigate the process. There are a variety of tests that we can use to identify the root problems and help tailor and pace the advice to you.